What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space, and we're back in Space Engineers, back on the firing range for a bit of, sort of, bit of theory before I introduce this thing over here, because I didn't do all of the weapon testing the first time around, there's a couple of questions I wanted to sort of answer before we went any further, so first of all we have something here with a large rocket launcher on it, and the point of this is simply just to demonstrate that the large launchers behave exactly the same as the small ones, they just shoot more rockets. So this is still going to take that same number of rockets to go through, maybe a couple more because the spread is a bit wider. But as you can see, are we through yet? Still no, boom, 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 boom. Nope, still going. This is a single layer of heavy armor. And yeah, this is really just confirming what I said before, and if you haven't seen that, I did some weapon testing previously, shooting these little things with single rockets and counting how many rockets it took to go through various types of armour and what effect that had. And the end result was that kind of the in-game weapons aren't as effective as you might like, at least not until you start stacking them up in huge and kind of un un unusable numbers almost. And this kind of almost leads me onto this, because this was another suggestion from someone in the comments that... Basically, if I was to get a lot of Gatling cannons together, I would have a very similar effect f to the rocket launchers. You know, they are not useless, as I initially said. And while that is true, I don't feel that they are particularly effective either. So if I stop colliding with the ship that's underneath me and just open fire on this, and it's going to push the ship back a lot when I do so, the recoil is pretty bad. You can see we've got a lot of Gatlings here, and we are really not doing very much. And we've got a hole to begin with. Let's see if we can't make that a bit bigger. Uh, yeah. So the Gatlings, with a lot of ammo used, which makes this kind of moot point for survival anyway, you're never going to be able to make that much ammo up for an attack that only does... Well, we've got through a single block worth of heavy armour so far. So this kind of just confirms what I was saying before, that the in-game weapons are kind of inefficient as far as their potential and how much damage they can cause. Um, they're great, but could be better. So the whole point of this video was to look at kinetic weaponry uh, and how well things work when you're literally just pushing something heavy into something else, um, especially when it comes to heavy armor, because you know the heavy armor, as we've seen here, is really tough these days. It takes quite a lot of beating. So what we've got here is literally just a lump of heavy armor. Uh, small ship blocks and I'm going to charge forwards, release it at a sort of sensible speed and see what happens when it collides into the armour in front. And as I move in, there we go, that looks good, let's release and bing. Okay, so we did do a bit of damage there, we kind of opened the hole up that had already been made first, but more importantly, the projectile bounced off. And that's not really the effect you're looking for when you're trying to create a I don't know what you would call this, kinetic, maybe even a breaching weapon. So, I mean, let's just demonstrate again, even on this light armour here, as we come in, boom, bit of a dent, and the thing's bounced off again. Whereas, if I was to pick up a large ship equivalent, and yes, of course, this is much, much, much heavier, so as you would expect, it does not take much speed for that to create quite a noticeable hole, especially through light armour like that. Uh, the same would be true, Let's go and grab the bigger one here and twist it round so it's pointing the right way. It's a little trick for anyone who didn't know that. If you're having difficulty trying to align things, uh, you can stick any ship to another ship like that and then use the ship alignment tools to spin them around. I find that really handy at times when you're trying to get things all parallel to each other but they aren't actually attached. So again, we'll charge in with this block, just release it. The one in front of us is now three heavy armour blocks thick, and we're not going to go that fast, so there we go. And boom. And it looks like we are at two in? One one, or at least, at least one block in, two, maybe. And that's into a three thick heavy armour shield. That's about as thick as you're ever going to come up against, really. Anything thicker than that, and I think you start coming up against ships that don't really move. Uh, they get very, very heavy, and it becomes exponentially difficult, to, more difficult to put enough thrusters on them to make things work out like you expect. So, yeah, that seemed interesting, and from that I thought, well, why not try and further that idea and use this as an actual weapon? So this is what I've developed as my kind of concept breaching rocket. So, very simple concept, we have a projectile on the front on merge blocks and it is designed to separate in flight so that the very first thing to arrive at the target is the projectile and then following up behind it 
to drive into the hole is a large explosive ship and obviously this has got plenty of engine on it so they can accelerate nice and fast and is fully remote controlled now there is always this question okay people will be able to see you coming because your antenna's on you could launch this from miles away and turn the antenna off if you wanted to but for today's experiments and tests i'm not going to do that i'm just going to fly it in so that we can actually see what these ships are doing uh, there's also a final comment to do with these which i'll come to at the end but is connected to the fact they don't behave like you'd expect them to. There's, there's something a bit wrong with how these merge blocks are functioning in this case. But I'm just going to cut straight to some footage now of these things in action so I can show you exactly how they work. And they're actually being flown from an antenna way over there. So let me cut across to that. So I'm now over here in this little antenna I've built literally just for launching these things. The ships that I'm going to use as targets are behind me. If I just jump out and show you. Here we go. Our favourite red and blue ships, plus the heavy, very heavy armoured carrier that I built a couple of uh, videos ago. And that thing is four to five heavy armour layers thick in places, and it is all heavy armour. It is very tough to crack. So let's jump in and take control of the first one of our breach missiles. So get control of it, and as you can see in here, it's pretty straightforward. There's a merch group. There's a group that is all of the warheads combined. And all that happens is there is a sensor set up on the rear end to explode all those warheads once it sees it's inside something. And that's sort of the breaching idea of things. So let's jump to the remote control, jump to the camera that is floating on the bottom, and line ourselves up for our first run. So easiest to turn the UI off, get rid of those antennas. Center mass, I think, is a good choice. And off we go. So as with a lot of the other weapons I've been doing with merge blocks like this, we are accelerating with the dampers off so that we don't lose speed when we let go of the throttle so that we can detach the front of the ship safely. And we're going to do that at about 400 meters, let it go a bit ahead of us, and then we're going to catch it back up and drive into its hole, or hopefully drive into the hole it's created. So as we come in, we can now release that. I'm going to turn my dampers on to let it get in head. And there goes the, the breach projectile as such. It goes in, and we follow it into the hole and hopefully I can now cut to a bit of footage showing you exactly that what that looked like on the far end but let's go and have a look at the damage a single breach weapon caused onto these red ships which of course are primarily light armor I will admit this is not a heavily armored ship but as you can see the explosion very much went off in the center of the ship rather than on the outside of the ship which is often the problem with these torpedo style weapons the extra breach part allows the rocket to get further inside before it blows and as such we've blown a pretty nice hole straight the way through this red ship in fact looks quite sexy so same thing again let's try another shot and this time we're going to try it on the same red ship but at a slightly different angle so we're going to attack into the top of the ship rather than into the side so like before, this is exactly the same craft, uh, and the only difference is we're going to be attacking what is probably one of the heavier armoured parts of these big red ships, so down the top where they've got quite a lot of blocks built up for the shape and for the armour. And we're going to do basically the same thing. Come in, dampers off, and release the projectile about 400 metres out, and then follow it in to see what happens. So just coming up to sort of release point, and let that go, dampers on, and then you want to follow it up. Try and follow the hole it's left. There it is, and in. Let's see exactly what that did. Uh, evidently hit straight into the top of the bridge by the looks of things. It's like the actual main projectile survived a decent amount of it. The ship, however, I mean, as you can tell, that was not the damage caused by being hit by that bit that's floating away down there. That's the damage caused by the explosions and the explosives being able to get right inside the ship itself. Again, let's uh, cut back to another piece of footage. So for this one, we're aiming at the top of one of my most heavily armoured ships. So as I said earlier, it's four or five layers of heavy armour that this is going to have to get through. And in order to sort of help with that, I have increased the length of the breech torpedo on the front of it. So depending on what you're coming up against, you could customise this to some extent at least, because what you want to happen is for the breech torpedo, the front portion, to be destroyed. So that when you come in with the rear portion, that's not colliding with anything. It's just going straight into the ship. It looks like this is a pretty nice shot, so let's release the front and then keep with it. 
in it goes and in we follow it and let's go and have a quick check as to what exactly was the result and of course any damage to this is going to be reasonably impressive because this is very very heavily armored let's see I mean we did hit it by the looks of things in a very convenient place right into the engines but how bad did we do okay so we've got a couple of layers of armor straight in the front here again the rear of the ship is still alive thanks to the sort of forced detonation and in fact that stood up pretty well to that particular attack and that's interesting because that leads me on to the final bit which is that as I mentioned before there are some of these that don't quite behave like you would expect so come over here I'll show you the last two variants I tried to make before finishing up with something very very silly um, which are these two here uh, this one here actually functions just fine. It's got artificial mass blocks at the front. Uh, the aim was to try and make the front end heavier because uh, obviously an artificial max block actually weighs more than a heavy armor block. So that really is only effective against something you know doesn't have gravity. But against something that doesn't have gravity, it works pretty well. I wouldn't say it actually works any better than the standard one though. Uh, I'm not sure if the artificial mass actually functions quite like I'm thinking there. I think the artificial mass literally just responds to gravity but as far as actually increasing the weight of the ship, does nothing. Um, this one here was, as you can probably see, just designed to make a much bigger hole so that the back end would have something much easier to follow through into. Unfortunately, and both that one and this one have exactly the same problem, so if I could just describe this one briefly, basically a two-stage variant. So we had the initial projectile, a small payload designed to open the hole up bigger so that the final payload, the large one, could get right inside the ship and cause the maximum damage. However, if I just cut, well, I won't cut to. However, the problem with these things is, for some reason, when you detach, on this one, when you detach the front, and on this one, when you detach this bit, it blows up. For, and I can't work out why. All the other ones function fine, but for some reason this and that are, are, are or were when I first built them, I've since fiddled them around to try and fix the problem, were identical. And yet when you detach the front portion, the rear end blows up. It's nothing to do with the sensor. I've tried having that off. Uh, I've tried changing the configurations of the blocks at the back here. Don't understand why, but these front merge blocks, when detached, blow up on that one. And these merge blocks here, when detached, blow up on this one. If anyone's got a solution for why on earth that is, please hit me up. I'd be very interested to find out. And now, finally, for the very silly thing. Um, it's not hard to work out what this is. Uh, for when you absolutely, absolutely have to remove whatever it is that you're flying towards from the situation, I recommend a battering ram. And just as a little demonstration, this, this again is remote controlled, but I won't. They will go in here and use the little cockpit for the best possible view. And we're just going to go straight into, or straight back into, I should say, that uh, heavily armoured ship we originally tried to take out. So, where are you? There you are. That looks like a decent line. I tried to make it as quick as possible. It's still unbelievably slow because it weighs five and a half tonnes, maybe a little bit more. But uh, it is hilarious the results when you actually come up to the other end. Uh, yes, it literally does cut things in half if you're hitting something lightly armoured. If you're hitting something heavily armoured, like I'm about to demonstrate, the results are a little bit different, but still very, very amusing. So, well, we're perhaps a little bit high. We are going to hit it, but only just. Let's see if I can't angle ourselves down a bit so we can get a nice central shot. And I've taken out wasted space. <laughs> But you don't stop the bulldozer. Kind of pretty, isn't it? So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I think what I'm going to do f from these concepts is start looking at how I can implement mods to kind of change these designs and make them more functional, because there's certainly some issues with merge blocks. Um, and how they collide with other objects and there's certainly some issues with merge blocks making the designs enormous when they could be a much more sort of pretty layout so let me know what you think about that down in the comments whether there's any cool mods you know of that I should try out first time I've experienced or will be experimenting with mods so really interested to hear what you guys experiences would be 
And if you've liked this video, found the idea cool, interesting in any way, please hit that like button, hit subscribe, really helps me and the channel out. Thanks a lot for watching guys, and I will catch you next time. Woo!